The flat earth model has a big problem, a very big one, and I think we solved that problem. We solved that problem. We solved that problem. We solved that problem. How many of you think that the flat earth model doesn't make sense because the sun would never rise and set, but instead be visible 24 hours a day? Welcome to the Steve and Dr. Zach show. Now, if you ask any scientist about his opinion about the flat earth, he will ask you this. How do the sunrise and sunset work on the flat earth model? And the flat earther will answer perspective. Well, that is not enough. I mean, perspective is just a little part of the answer, but it's not enough. So the scientist here debunks the entire model with one question. That was my only problem ever since I started to study this flat earth model. I know it was not the only reason why the sun disappears the morning moves away from us, you know? And 15 months ago, I started to work on this with Chandra Seke, aka The Man. And then we teamed up with Steve Torrens and together we solved this puzzle. The answer was always in front of us. We just didn't see it like fish don't see the water. Now we can model it and understand the flat earth model more than ever before. Now let me summarize the story for you. At the beginning we thought about something that we could add to perspectives to understand how the sun works because we were sure that perspective was not the only reason why the sun disappears behind the horizon line. But we were not sure if our theory would work and we had no idea how to test it. Steve already had a flat earth model designed in his software, but there was something missing from it. And this something was the atmosphere. And we had no idea how to add this atmosphere to his model, if you know what I mean. Uh, if you take a look at any animation of the flat earth, the atmosphere is always missing. It's like drawing the flat earth in a vacuum of space. And this is why the sun never sits on the flat earth because there is no refraction. Now my question is, have you ever seen an animation of the globe earth model with the effect of the atmosphere? I'm not talking about just drawing the clouds or the air. It's not just drawing them. It's how to make them work as they do in real life. You know what I mean? They know how the refraction works and they know how the atmosphere works, but they never add it to their animation, you know. And if they do, the sun would never sit as they claim it does. And we can prove that too. Modern science claims that the apparent sun sets after the real sun because of the atmosphere and the effect of refraction. So when we see the apparent sun above the horizon line, that is just a reflection of the real sun which is already set. But when we added the atmosphere to the globe model, it did the same thing that it did on the flat earth model. The apparent sun goes down first and the real sun follows it. That is contrary to the way refraction is normally presented. So the atmosphere is something that we can't ignore. It's like looking at the sun with your glasses on. The atmosphere is like a lens with no cover. We are like fish in the sea, you know. So the atmosphere can change the whole view of the sun. Now, in order to prove this, we had to add the atmosphere to Steve's model. But the question was, how? It was not an easy thing to do, and by coincidence, Steve found out that his program is capable to model the atmosphere exactly how it is. So he took the data from the internet and built all the layers of the atmosphere, and suddenly the magic happened, and everything started to make perfect sense. And when I say everything, I mean everything. The sun started to rise and set, and it started to match reality more than the globe model does. With 3D software, you can model the atmosphere very accurately using refraction settings. We're not talking about drawing it and making it visible. We're talking about drawing the layers with their real effects on sunlight. Once I discovered it, I told my team, guys, we've got a solution. We can test the atmosphere's effect on the light. After we had everything fixed, we started to compare it with real life. We actually took some real sunset videos and compared them with both the flat earth model and the globe earth model. And guess what? If you play the three videos at the same time, you would not know where the flat earth model is because it really looks like real life videos. 
Many scientists think that the flat earth model can't work because it can't represent sunrise and sunset. What are they going to say after studying this proof? Is it going to make sense to some of them now? They can't ignore the atmosphere, and all we did to make the flat earth model work was add the atmosphere exactly how science represents it. We didn't make it up. Now, solving this problem doesn't mean that we solved everything. We still have a problem with the elevation angles because the sun that we see is not in its real position. What we see is just the apparent sun. So imagine the, the real sun is here and the fake sun is here. The shadow that you're gonna get is going to follow the, the apparent sun and not the real sun. And this is not what we want, okay? So the elevation angle that you're gonna measure with the sextants or with any other tool is not the angle of the real position of the sun. It's just the angle of the apparent sun. And we're still working on how to locate the real sun that we never see. Once we locate it, we will be able to get the exact elevation angles of the real position of the sun. And by doing that, we can draw the flat earth map from scratch. I couldn't continue drawing the flat earth map with the triangulation method that I talked about a few months ago, if you remember because I found out that I was triangulating a fake position of the sun. So triangulating the sun from three different positions is like triangulating three suns at the same time, and that will never ever give you a precise number. So that is why I stopped plotting the map, and right now I'm just focusing on how to locate the real position of the sun. When the sun is directly overhead, the refraction is near zero, but you still can't say where the sun actually is. As the sun travels towards the west, the atmosphere creates an image of it for every eye. So anyone who looks at the sun from the same angle as you, but from a different city, will see the apparent sun in a different position. But no one can see the sun in its real position. So if you try to triangulate the sun, you will never get the exact distance. This is like trying to triangulate a rainbow. This is how the sunrise and sunset started to work on the flat earth once the atmosphere was added. In the description you will find a link to the original video. Compare it with this one and make your own conclusions. Uh, we were planning to do an experiment to back up our theory and Shander Seke uh, or the man was supposed to do it because uh, he had what we needed but because of the problems of life we had to postpone everything but we will do many videos about this subject because it's the key to solve everything thanks for watching